Hey guys, we just launched the much awaited V2 of the table widget and I'm so excited to be able to share this with you. It's been completely rebuilt and right now you can directly edit data inside of the table widget without having to set up a separate view with a form widget and a bunch of input widgets. All of that overhead has been completely taken care of and you can choose to have everything set up within the table widget. Now, this video is going to be focused on showing you how to use the inline table editing feature and we're going to broadly take a look at it in these two themes. First, I'm going to show you how to set up inline editing for a single row. Then I'll show you how to set up multi-row editing using the custom update mode. Are you excited for this? I'm sure you are. My name is Confident and I'm a developer at Wiki the Labsmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is use the table widget. And to do that, we need some data. So I'm going to be bringing in data from a movies database I have set up on MongoDB. So I'm going to go to data sources. In fact, if you love to follow along, you can use the sample movies collection right here, but I'm going to connect the custom collection I have set up. So let's call this movies. All right, and we're going to use the string URI. We need to paste this in right here and we can click on save button and that looks good. So the first query we'll be writing will be one to grab data from the database. So let's call this get movies. All right, and it's going to be find document command for the collection. This is movies. And for the query, we want to uh, grab mo all movies. And for the limit, let's just grab a bunch of 20 documents, for example. So I'm going to run this. And here we have some data coming back. And let's go to display this in the table. So I'm going to use the suggested widget and just select table. And here we have a table widget on the canvas. So that's the regular table widget flow. Um, but let's go in to customize this table a bit. So for the underscore ID, I don't want this to be visible. So I'm just going to hide this. And also for the poster, I'm going to go in to set this as a image column or an image column. And you can see we have those posters updated here. So right here we have the table widget and we're good to go. But while I was editing this, you may have noticed that we have a bunch of check marks to the side of each row. And yes, you got it right. Um, if you guessed that this was the editing feature, you got it right. So you have these check marks right here and you can check on them to mark a row to be editable. So for example, right now we can set the rear to be editable. But what I'm just going to do is make all columns editable on the table. And if I click on this, all columns are editable. And you can see if I go hover over a column, we actually have that editable. But one thing you notice is that uh, the edit property right now only supports columns who have a column type of text or numbers. So it means that you can go into update columns that have a column type of image, for example. As I'm hovering over the poster column, you see we don't have, we don't have any edit icon. So I'm just going to do one small tweak here. So let's move the title to the top and we can move the year and that looks good. All right, so here we have a nice table widget with um, table editing turned on. Now, there are two ways you can set up the table widget to work with inline editing, like I mentioned earlier. The first we'll be taking a look at is single row editing, and then we'll take a look at a multi row editing or setting the update mode to custom. So to show you how to set up single row editing, that's pretty straightforward. Scroll down right here, and once you have the editing feature turned on, you notice you have a new property called update mode, which you can set to custom or row level. We're going to set this to row level, and that means that we can only make changes to a selected row. So for example, if I go make a change to the rated of the first row, for example, so we can change this from PG-13 to just PG, and we have that in the save state, although not yet written to the database, I can't go in to make updates to other rows. So if I go try to make an update to a different row, you see that the icon is grayed out and I can't make that update. But if I go try to update a different cell on the same row, I am actually free to make that change. So that's the single row update mode. And right now, if we scroll to the side, you notice that we have a save and discard button. So this button is going to control saving an entire row and here's where you can go customize it. But in cases where you only specify certain rows to be editable, you can actually go into the row you have set to be editable 
And if you take a look at this, you now have an on submit event, which is going to be triggered whenever the user hits the enter key after making an edit or hits the escape key. So you can choose to, in this event, write those changes to the database and have your application refreshed if you want to. But what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be configuring this on the entire row level. So we'll be using the save and discard button. So let's head back to set this up. And here we have the save and discard button. And by the way, you can also hide this if you don't want it to be visible. So let's go in to configure this. And what we want to do here is write a change to the database. So to be able to see updates that are written to the database, we've actually exposed a new property under the table widget that is called the updated row property. And that's where you get to see what updates or changes have been made to the data on the table widget and the row, in fact, we are talking about right here. So to see that property, I'm going to grab a text widget so that we can take a look at it. So this is a text widget. I'm just going to place it right here and we can expand this, for example. And if we take a look at what we have in um, table1.updatedRow, you see that we have the data that has been updated in this property. But right now, there's a little bug with it and this data is not actually displayed not until you click the update button, but it's a small bug that should be fixed by the time you're watching this video. And as you might have also noticed, we have a new key here called Edit Actions 1. This was not originally part of the data pulled out from the database, and this will be fixed um, at the same time as the fix for the updated rules is rolled out. So you should already have this by the time you're seeing this video. All right, but let's go on to write the update query so that we can save the row that has been updated back to the database. So to be able to do that, I'm just going to head back to the data source. And here in the movies, um, data source connection, I'm going to write a new query and let's call this update movie. All right, that looks good. So for the command, this is going to be an update command. And for the collection, this is going to be movies. All right, for the query, this is where we specify what document we want updated. And we can do that by just supplying the ID of the document we want updated. So this is going to be underscore ID, and this is MongoDB, so it's going to be an object ID. And for the actual data, we can pull this out from the table updated row property. So this is going to be table one dot updated row, and this is going to be dot underscore ID. Right now, we have, don't have the ID showing up, but as I told you earlier, during runtime, that data is going to be updated and would have the ID as well as other properties of the updated row shown within this object. All right, so that's for the query. Now for the actual updates, this is where we can supply the body of the row, which we actually want to get saved to the database. So this can easily come from table one dot updated row and uh, that will be good to go. But because this is MongoDB, the update is not going to be written to the database if we have the underscore ID as part of the update body. So we need a way to remove that from the update sent to the database. And we also want to exclude the edit actions one because this was not originally part of the database. So let's use the lodash omit method to have that removed. So let's um, use lodash. So I'm going to use underscore dot omit. All right. And we want to omit both the underscore ID and the edit actions one. Because we are omitting two keys from the object, I'm going to supply an array that would have those um, properties within it. So we want to omit the underscore ID. And as you can see, that has been omitted. We also want to omit the edit actions one property from the object. So this is going to be edit actions one, and we just have the actual update data right here. So this looks good. And what I'm going to do is head back here and set it up such that whenever the save button is clicked on, we actually make that update to the database and then refresh the application. So let's head back to the table widget. All right. For the save and discard button, let's go in to set it up such that when the save button is clicked on, we actually go to call the update movie query. So on save, we want to execute a query, and this is going to be the update movie query. 
And when that's successful, what we want to do is go to execute the get movies query and we're good to go. So we have this um, set to a rating of PG and I'm just going to update the rated to 7.5, for example. So we've made two updates. And now whenever I go to click on the save button, we have that data written to the database and the application has been updated with the correct information state. So that's how easy it is to set up a single row update workflow on the table widget. Now, I also promised I'll be showing you how to set up a multi-row update workflow, and that's very easy to set up as well. So let's head back to the table properties. And for the update mode, all we need to do right here is set the update mode to custom. And as you've noticed, we have the save and discard button removed. That's because we're in the custom mode and we expect it to handle updates ourselves. So what I'm going to do is move the table a bit to the bottom and let's go grab a button widget which we would use to submit all of the updates that have been made. All right, so we have the button right there. And uh, one thing you notice with this mode is that we have the ability to make multiple edits to different rows on the table widget. So for example, I can change the rated of the first row to PG-13, so let's say this to PG-13. I can go to the second row and change the rating to 6.1, for example. And for the third row, I can go to change it to TV Guardian. All right, so we've made multiple edits to various rows on the table widget. And to see all of those changes we've made, we have a new property called updated rows, which has an array of objects containing all of the rows that have been updated. So let's set this to scroll content so that we can take a look at that data. And if you take a look at that data within the text widget, um, here we're binding the updated rows right here. You can see that we have um, the first row right here with all of the updates. We have the second row right here with all of the updates. And we also have the third row right here with all of the updates included. So now that we have an access to all of this information, what we can do is write a query to take all of these updates and save them into the database. We're using MongoDB here and there are various ways to write uh, complex queries to make multiple updates to the database um, in a single write, but I'm just going to use JavaScript to keep things simple. So we're going to set up a single update query and then use that for all of the multi-updates we want to make. So let's go set that up. I'm going to grab a JavaScript file right here. So I'm going to create a JavaScript file and let's call this the utils file. All right, and in the utils file, we're going to have an update menu function. So let's call this update menu. All right, that looks good. So in the update menu function, we are going to have a bunch of updates. So I'm going to say const updates, and these are going to come from table one dot updated rows. All right, so if I go ahead to return this data, so let's return update. I'm just going to call this updates. So if I go ahead to run this, you can see that we have all of the data that has been updated from the table. So what I'm going to do is map over this data and just return only the all fields property because that is what contains the update we actually need. So we can do a dot map here. And what we want to do is return i dot all fields and that looks good. So we can go ahead to run this. And right now we just have all of the update information. But since we want to write a query, we would need to return a bunch of promises here, but let's come back to it after creating the query that would actually make the updates to the database. So let's go create a new query. So this is going to be the movies data source. I'm going to create a new query and let's call this updates many. All right. For the command, this is going to be an update document command. And for the collection, this is going to be movies. All right, that looks good. For the query, this is going to be similar to what we saw in the updates movies query, but the only difference right here is that we'll be getting the data as query params passed into this query. So this is going to come from this dot query params. So we have the underscore ID here, and this is going to be an object ID. And for the data, this is going to come from this dot params dot underscore ID. All right, right now it's undefined, but at runtime, it's going to be populated. For the actual updates, this is going to come from this.params. 
but we need to also omit the underscore id so that we don't have that added to the query sent up to mongodb so let's use underscore and we can use the omit and let's pass in the object this is going to be this dot params and what we want to omit is a single key here which is just going to be the underscore id so we just want to omit the underscore id and in this case we don't need to pass in an array we can use a simple string literal all right that looks good so let's head back to the update menu function and right here instead of returning the data what i'm going to do is return a bunch of promises so this is going to be the update menu dot run and then i'm going to pass in the data as a params to the update menu call and um, the next update i'm going to make is try to resolve or run all of the promises that we are creating right now so I, we can use the promise dot all and then pass in the updates so this is going to loop through all of the updates and run or execute all of them and then what we can do right here is run the get movies query so that we have the application updated so this is going to be get movies dot run all right so this looks good i'm going to head back to the application and link all of that to the submit button we have right here so when the submit button is clicked on what we want to do is go ahead to run an action and we want to run the javascript function rather we want to run the updates menu function so let's um click on the run button don't forget we made an update to the rated of the first row we made an update to the rating of the second row and we made an update to the rated field of the third row so let's click on the update button and as you can see we have all of that change saved to the database so this is how easy it is to set up a custom update mode for the table widget awesome so this is how to set up inline editing for the table widget and i hope you found this video helpful if you did don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed and I'm going to see you in my next video. All right, have a nice day. Bye-bye.